a mother is found stabbed to death inside her apartment. When you are up close and personal with a knife or a machete, it is so personal. Investigators would trace the brutal slaying back to someone who was once close to her. As gruesome as it is, and as sad as it is, as the young daughter said, it's the death of both parents, really. The Marietta Police Department said they were alerted by 911 dispatchers on the morning of June 16th about a caller reporting that a woman had been stabbed in a local apartment complex. Once police arrived, they made the horrific discovery. The body of 42-year-old Samantha Woolery, who was found unresponsive with visible cuts on her body. According to police, Samantha's co-workers made the gruesome discovery after they became concerned when she didn't show up for work. Her co-workers told police when they arrived to check on her, the front door to her home was closed but unlocked. Early in the investigation, police reportedly believed Samantha was attacked overnight by someone who knew her. And police would note a bloody scene. Inside Samantha's apartment, authorities saw bloody footprints leading from the bedroom to the front door of the home. Samantha's death investigation would take an even more gruesome turn, as police reported also finding a blood-stained machete on the floor beside the bed. It's a crime of passion is really what it is, and it's very personal. When, as a former prosecutor, we would deal with homicides that were gun gunshots, let's say, that is a less personal um, tool of murder if you but when you are up close and personal with a knife or a machete it is so personal and it, it leads to passion which in this case what I as the prosecutor would be waiting for would be the defense papers saying to me that this is a crime of passion and they would use that toward their defense in saying that the person was so enraged from passion that they couldn't differentiate judgment from, you know, they couldn't control their judgment if you would. But it is very personal in nature, which is unfortunately something that we see in domestic violence crimes um, more often than not. It's up close. Police would later get their break in the case when they obtained ring surveillance footage from a neighbor, which showed a man leaving Samantha's apartment with blood on his hands, feet and pants. Police believe the man caught on camera was allegedly Samantha's ex-husband, 49-year-old Mickey Anthony Woolery. And it wasn't just the surveillance footage that led police to their suspect. Authorities say a bloody fingerprint found on the wall near a light switch matched Woolery's right thumb. After the gruesome crime, Woolery fled from Georgia to his home in Indiana, more than 500 miles away, where authorities would end up arresting him. He now faces charges including felony murder, felony aggravated assault, felony possession of a weapon during a crime, and felony malice murder and the death of his former wife. As far as the evidence, I'm actually not surprised because this is what it is looking like with a domestic violence crime of passion. When there is cleanup of the scene, it, it shows that it's going to strengthen the defense that it is a crime of passion, someone that acted out of passion because there was no that consciousness of guilt to what it is that they did, that they were truly acting um, on them rather than their judgment. So when I had prior cases, when I wanted to attack the defense of crime of passion, if they did clean it up, or if they did try to hide themselves or try to get an alibi, that's almost their, their consciousness of they were so, but in this particular case, no, I'm not surprised. They left it because it probably was a crime of passion, as gruesome as it is, and as sad as it is, as the young daughter said, it's the death of both parents, really. Christine Grillo is a former prosecutor who specializes in domestic violence cases. She explains there might have been red flags all along in Samantha and Mickey's relationship. Well, the first thing that I looked for, which was easy to find, is that there was a history of abuse, which is always so upset because that those are the red flags. Those are the warnings. There was a protective order issued at one particular point. But then again, it goes to what what can people do in law enforcement and everything else to provide further protection, to anticipate this gruesome crime that eventually did happen. But that's where my mind immediately goes, I guess, as a former prosecutor, because I would be looking to establish my evidence and um, prior prior incidents lead to um, strengthening the case against them. But it is always sad to see that there is a history and that is a red flag and that that was a warning sign, if you would. Mickey Woolery reportedly had a violent past. In 2022, he was charged with felony domestic battery committed in the presence of a child less than 16 years old. However, the case was later dismissed. 
And here's what else we know about Samantha Woolery. She was on her way to becoming a surgeon before she was tragically killed and was about to begin her surgical residency at Grady Hospital in July through the Morehouse School of Medicine, where she was named the 2023 Intern of the Year. The school posted a heartfelt tribute to her on social media, writing in part, It is with heavy hearts that we remember Dr. Samantha Woolery, a devoted first-year surgery resident. Dr. Woolery was deeply cherished for her kind and engaging spirit, as well as her remarkable ability to connect with everyone around her. Dr. Woolery's dedication to advancing health equity and her compassionate care for patients made a significant impact on our community. Her legacy will continue to inspire us all. Dr. Woolery's murder would also leave a huge hole in the heart of her family, as her children now have to come to grips with essentially losing both parents. Samantha's daughter Naima told Atlanta News First her mom's death felt like her heart got ripped out of her chest. She explained to the outlet she had a hunch her father was involved shortly after learning her mother had been killed, but didn't want to believe it. She said her mother really stuck her neck out for her father. Naima Woolery also made a heartbreaking tribute to her mother on her Facebook page, writing, My mom was the best mom I could have asked for. No matter what happened to us, she did everything she could to make me happy. Justice will be served. Rest easy, mommy. She also created a GoFundMe page to help with funeral costs and a memorial service. Despite the seeming mountain of evidence against Mickey Woolery, Grillo says that doesn't mean the case is a slam dunk. No, because the crime of passion is a real defense. And what ends up happening, you, you are guilty but responsible. The laws are different in each state, but they're similar in that nature that it's an affirmative defense. In other words, yes, I did the crime, but please don't hold me responsible because it was my passion, not guilt. But they do, you can obey, um, as the prosecutor, I would be fighting it simply because there was a, a prior act. Um, there was an order of protection. There was things out there that said it wasn't just a snap decision to do this, that it may have been some kind of premeditation. I would be looking for more evidence. I would be looking for more of a plan or a scheme that was set up to execute this crime. For instance, if she were left, if, she, if he knew that she was going to be home alone, if he knew that he would have access to her, those are things that you could chip away at the defense. So it is not a slam dunk for the prosecution. It's a lot of work to overcome an affirmative defense, uh, which I'm anticipating the defense would do in this case. And with the possible defense being a crime of passion, Grillo says it's possible prosecutors could offer Mickey Woolery a plea deal. I do think that they're going to come back with the crime of passion. Um, if I were the def I have defended cases as well, and I would be saying to them, uh, you know, 25 years, you know, with an ability for parole, uh, or I would be even pushing for the guilty but not responsible, which means they end up going to an institution um, until they're found mentally fit to be released, which could be 20 years from now. So they would serve their time in a mental facility. Uh, that's something as a defense attorney I would be asking for. Uh, and then I would try to, yeah, I do believe they are, and they're probably going to try to bring the daughter in uh, to have and support some kind of plea deal. But I, I do anticipate it pleading because it's it's just wasted time. If if he everyone knows that he did it, who else would have done it? It's simply just a waste of time. It'll go forward with motions, I think, maybe pretrial hearing, but then ultimately it's going to be a plea. As Mickey Woolery remains behind bars, Samantha's children, family, friends, and colleagues now are trying to pick up the pieces as they come to terms with the unimaginable loss. According to online records, Mickey Woolery is still behind bars in the Hamilton County Jail in Indiana and is being held on no bond. Authorities plan to extradite him back to Georgia to face the charges against him. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner.